So you want to learn Hue Forge, but it looks way too complicated. You don't have huh? an AMS, a color changing, a 3D printer. First of all, Hue Forge is complicated unless you know how it works. So I'm going to quickly break it down in a very simple way that you're going to understand. And you can do this on an Ender 3. What? Any 3D printer that can pause and you can change the filament out, you can do it. You can do Hue Forge, right? And most of the time you only need like two or three color changes so it's not that big of a deal to do it on an end of three It'll just take a little bit longer but it's pretty simple so let me show you a hue forge that i basically put together probably one of my favorites cool thing about this is it's actually got a transparent back so if i shine the light through on the other side you'll be able to see a nice kind of effect kind of shine through so you could have a bit of fun with that you know kind of cool you can like have a specific detail that's shining through on one part of it maybe you could have like a sun in there and then put a light behind it something like that right but yeah i'm going to show you the process of how i actually made this very simple and i'll explain it along the way so let's get into the laptop we'll go to the software i like my shortcuts that's windows and q to get there and uh i'm going to just go through the, the software very simple so at first this is kind of what you're going to see um and i'll, I'll just walk through the process of how i actually make the hue forge first and i'll explain things along the way right so first of all what i do is just drag in the picture that's the very first thing i do and it's going to show you a representation of how the hue forge looks and next we're going to start to add our filament colors in so whatever colors you want you can add that in straight right and it basically goes in order of like the bottom the next layer the next layer and the next layer here you can see it's layer number so basically what we're going to do is we're going to add our filaments in so for this particular hue forge i use transparent at the bottom and then we went with a red that was red elegu put it in the second place because it's next up then we went with a orange which was a transparent orange and then we went with, interestingly enough, a light blue. So sun blue, light blue. And now you can kind of see a better representation of this Hue Forge. It looks kind of, kind of similar now, right? Let's quickly show you that. So you can see the difference between that and that. So now we're going to start to play with the sliders. We want to start to adjust the value of where this filament changes. And you can just play around with this and see how it looks. Basically, you want it to be on top. So it'll be a higher number. That means it's on top of that. So that red, you want it to be around about here. You can adjust the orange. This is the transparent orange. And the thing with TDs, if you change this number here, that makes a difference on how much it blends in. So I put four. And that's going to like be a strong change compared to let's say 14 of where it was before and now you see the difference in how much it shines through and i actually got an interesting example so let me quickly show you this so this is a little square but basically i've changed the the layers so it's one layer here two layers here three and then four so that's how td works that's how much light shines through so for example, if you have a black, you're not going to get a lot of light shining through because obviously it's a very dark color and light just doesn't shine through very well. Now you might think with a white, light will shine through, but this is like more of a matte white. So light still doesn't shine through that well with this, right? And we've got like a little marble filament, another example. Let's see if we can get some focus here. So you should be able to see how the light shines through depending on the layer. Let me try to get a little light here. Depending on how thick the layer is and the type of filament. The color does have an effect somewhat. Obviously a black is always going to be hard to show the light through. But you can get different colors that have different kind of elements of how much it shines through in terms of the light. So that's a little example of TD. So one TD is basically, that's when barely anything comes through, right? Like most blacks are going to be like uh, 
0 0.5 would be 1 TD, stuff like that. You see an example here of the blacks, so that means barely any light shines through. And then maybe if we have like a blue, you know, we have a 1 TD blue, that means it's going to be a very quick color change, there's not going to be a lot of blending. Um, let's see. And then you might have, let's say, an 8. So it's going to be a lot more blending. It's not going to be such a, a sharp color change. Um, and it's going to kind of give it more kind of detail and, or, and more blending. So if you have an image that has like very sharp color changes, let's say like a character with like an orange top and like blue trousers, then you want something that's low TD. So you have a quick color change. But if you have something that's more of like a sky, some clouds, you want something that's a high TD because you get more of that blending. And you can also adjust like the colors to blend with a high TD and a low TD. So having like the same color with two different TDs can give you like a really nice effect. So now that that's kind of explained, let's uh, start to move some of these colors. So I'll show you exactly the layers that I did for this. So 17 for red. Let's move that out of the way. And there's 28 for the transparent orange. Or is it 9, 17, 28, and then this at the top. Yeah. So you see that? Let's show you the picture again. So that's how it looks. And that's on the screen there. Zoom in a little bit. So you get a nice comparison. You can see the difference between these. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly save this and then we're going to take it to the software and we're going to do the color changes. So you can just hit file and press save or save as. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to save it as Tortoise HF or Hue Forge, I guess. And once that's saved, what it's going to do is it's going to create a batch of files. So you get these three files. This is the Hue Forge. So that will open like open up the actual Hue Forge. Uh, the describe file is what we just looked at. So it's going to tell us when to do the color changes and stuff. And then this is the actual STL file that you open up in your slicer. So let's quickly drag this into here. And I've got the filaments loaded up as well. So just put in the different colors. If you have an AMS, you can change the colors from here as well. So it matches up what you actually got. If you don't have an AMS, that's fine. We can just do the slice and get the color changes. But before you do that, make sure you have your settings correct. So I have an existing Hue Forge uh, uh, profile. So it'll tell you the, the settings over here, right? So first is 100% infill. Go over here. 100% infill, that's done. Then you go to quality. Layer height of 0 0.08, that's cool and a base layer height of 0 0.16. And the interesting thing is that I learned is rather than doing 0 0.08 millimeters for the minimum depth, you can actually do a height range modifier to have like taller layers for the first few ones because it doesn't actually affect uh, the actual hue forge like layering of how the image looks. So what we'll do is we can right click it and then height range modifier right here. And what we'll do is said 0 0.72, right? So what we'll do is add, we'll just click that, put 0 0.72 right there. And then what you can do is change the layer height. Now in order to calculate the layer height, we can just take the 0 0.72 and divide it by, you know, three, oops. 0 0.72 divided by three, and that's 0 0.24. So three layers of 0 0.24 will get us to our minimum depth. So put in 0 0.24 there. And then once you've got your settings in, then you'll be able to just do the normal slice and we'll wait for that to load. But yeah, that's basically going to make it so our hue forge is a lot quicker rather than doing, I think it would be about, wait, how many layers would that be? 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.08. That'd be nine layers. So now instead of nine, we're doing three. So we just saved uh, six layers worth of, of time there. 
Okay, so that's finally finished slicing. Let's just double check our layers. That gets up to the minimum height. 0.72, then it should get to 0.8. There we go. So we're going to look at the color changes. So rather than go by layer, we'll go by this. So 0.8 millimeters is over here. Swap to red. Boom. Now, if you don't have an AMS, just put in pausing and then change it manually when the filament or the 3D printer actually pauses. I'll just continue with the colors so you can see a representation. 17. Well, we're going to go 1.44 because we're going by the actual height now. And that was the orange. And then 2.32 is the light blue right over there. Now I'm going to change the transparent down here as well because it's not in order. And that should be of QForge basically completed with the color changes. Now we're going to re-slice that. So we double checked all our actual amounts. We can ignore the layers and just go by the actual height because we've done a height range modifier. And that should create us something that looks similar to our actual view forge, which is, yeah. Okay, so it looks like our hue forge is sliced. And now let's do a quick comparison with the hue forge and the actual model. As I look, it looks pretty good to me. So that's how the Hue Forge is representation versus the actual model. So let me know what you guys think if that made sense. Um, if you have any questions or anything, or you want a certain type of video, definitely let me know and I'll try my best to create that for you. So peace out, guys.